Well, welcome back. Uh, in this version here, we're going to learn about all your parts of your banjo, and uh, and then later we'll learn about what they role they play in making the banjo sound like it does. But first, we're going to learn the parts, every part of the banjo. We're going to learn that, and y'all stay tuned here, and we'll uh, try to show you each part of the banjo and what it does. Thank you. All right, we're going to learn about some parts of your banjo here. Uh, we'll start off right here with this tailpiece. This is your tailpiece. That holds your strings on it. You know, it raises up and your string hooks, hooks on it. We have a tailpiece right here that we might can get a close-up on. It's the same kind of tailpiece this is. Maybe you can get a close-up of it here. It's off of the banjo. Yeah. There you go. Uh, the strings hooked on these hooks right here. That's under it. It comes out through here. And comes on out and up, up the neck. So that would be your tailpiece right there. All right. We're gonna come on up the banjo now here to your bridge. This is your bridge right here. Look, a piece of wood that's up on your strings that holds your string up off your head. We have a bridge here. Sample, little piece of wood. Uh, it holds your strings up off your head. Then we come on up to your head. That's this piece of plastic that's stretched over your rim of your banjo. And it's held on there by this tension hook it's got all these uh, screws around it, hooks and nuts. Uh, we'll get into that, but that's what them hooks and nuts look like. Yeah, hooks and nuts. And uh, I'll show you where they're at. It's got 24 of them around the banjo here that, that holds you. Head pulls your head taut and tight down over your rim. So that's your head. We're going to move on up here now to this uh, arm rest, which it's important. That's where your arm rests on it when you're playing. That keeps uh, oil and, and dirt, sweat, or whatever else might get on your back of your head. This arm rest keeps that off of it. That's what it's for. Very important. Now we're going to move on to your resonator. It is the back of the banjo big wooden piece that's on the back. It's hooked onto the banjo with thumb screws. Right here's a thumb screw. It's got four in it. And here's a thumb screw, a close-up on it so you'll know what it looks like with it took out of your banjo. Yeah. It's got four a minute, goes around it. That holds your back on your banjo. Now we'll have to move on up the banjo to the other end to get a, to get a hold of the keys and stuff. Okay, let's talk about about the frets and the fingerboard. This black piece of wood, ebony. Some of them are rosewood, but this one's ebony. That's your fingerboard. Got the pearl inlays in it here. All right, these little metal pieces running across your fingerboard there. Those are frets. That's what makes the banjo sound different when you hit the string. Move it on down. Changes the notes of it. Those are called frets. These, we move on up here now, it's a truss rod cover. Underneath that, it's got a nut where you can adjust your neck, which you don't need to be messing with that. You get somebody that knows what they're doing to turn that, don't ever turn it. Uh, move on up to the machines. I call them keys. But the books call them machines. These are the keys. You got four keys on there. Of course, I got the tuner keys on this banjo, the, the D tuners, which I would advise anybody to put them on their banjo. They cost a little more, but you can have a lot of fun with the D tuner keys. Th those are real important, your keys. Now, right here, we built this banjo too, but uh, we, the, I built this banjo uh, four or five years ago for my granddaughter. It's got her name in it right here. 
but the banjos that we're going to build from now on are going to have fan banjos right, right here. And uh, they will be good banjos. We got one more thing here coming on down his neck. Noah, if you could get on down the neck a little bit here. It's a little old key sticking out of the side of this neck here. That's a, yeah, that's a fifth string key. See, the fifth string only comes up to here. As far as it comes, it don't come on up to here. And, that, and that's where your fifth string key is. So, uh, now that we've got the front part of this badge, I'm gonna ease the back off of it. And uh, if Noah wants, he can film me doing this. We'll ease the back off of this banjo, and I'll show you about rods and stuff that's inside of it, because it won't take but just a jiffy, like these thumb screws that I told you about. These four little thumb screws, they're right here. You just unscrew them. So, right here, we've got the back half way off of it now. Now we're going to go the other half. Got two over here. And I'll show you how they connect inside of the banjo. All right, now we're going to remove the banjo out of the resonator. So right now I'm going to show you about how they uh, fit into this resonator. See, this resonator has got lug, lug screws in it. Yeah, it's got four of them. Brace them down and they go through your banjo screw right down it's threaded, see? So that way, that fastens the back onto your banjo. So we're going to show you the inside of the back of the banjo now. These are coordinator rods. Got two of them in it. They, uh, they adjust your banjo to your rim. They set the uh, uh, arch on your banjo neck, leaning it back, letting it forward. You don't, you don't mess with these. You don't turn these because you can get your banjo all out of whack. If you turn these rods and, and not knowing what you're doing, you'll get your banjo out of whack. So you always let somebody do that that knows how. I learned that the hard way. I thought I could turn mine one time and I got my banjo so out of whack it took a man two days to get it set back right. But uh, I learned how to do that. So uh, that's your coordinator rod. Real important that you don't touch. Unless you know what you're doing, then you can adjust them. And these are all your nuts that's on over your hook. You can see them under how you take your back off. See, they're all hid under the back. When you put the resonator on, it hides all this stuff. But that's the inside of your badger now. And the thing I really like it, that I imagine we will incorporate into all of our badgers. Know if you can get me a shot right here. I don't know if you can come in close enough to see this little nail railroad spike right here where my fingernail is. It's a little railroad spike right there. Can you see that? I can't see it from here, but it, it's got a railroad spike there and one down here. We will put the railroad spikes in the banjos. Then it'll already be set up for you to put capos on it, which uh, this is a capo for playing in different keys, you know. Can you see that capo, Noah? So uh, the badges we build, we're going to put the railroad spikes in them. And uh, that's better than having this big sliding capo uh, and you have to bore holes in your banjo to put that big bar on there, and we're just not going to do that. Uh, now, if you want a bar put on your banjo after you buy one, that'll be up to you. But to, you can pull the spikes out, it won't hurt the pine. But uh, we will put the spikes in all of our banjos, because uh, I put them in everybody's banjo. Uh, that, that's the only way to go. The fifth train capo needs to be railroad spikes. Then, you, then when you capo up here, all you got to do is put that under the nail, and you got it. So that just about covers that. No, we might think of something later on to add to it. 
But right now, we appreciate everybody uh, looking at this. Hope we uh, taught you something about it. And uh, you can always email and, and ask questions. You know, we're we're here to make banjos, build banjos, and answer questions on banjos. And if we don't know the answer, we'll find it out. We'll find out what the answer is. So y'all, we hope y'all have a, enjoy a good picking here. Thank you.